In 1988, the life of a teenage horror freak was forever changed after he rented a VHS titled Screen Greats Volume 1 from his local video store. Tom Savini is highly revered among horror fans for his impeccable makeup skills, especially his gore. But Savini would serve as a massive inspiration to one of the underground's most well-known and most respected talents, Brian Pollock. In 1988, the 17-year-old horror fanatic found himself completely blown away by Savini's talents and would immediately begin to obsessively study and practice special effects makeup. From making peeled faces to crafting decrepit demons, Pollen would spend hours applying makeup to himself and his friends just to pose for a picture or two. But as time went on, the pictures just didn't cut it anymore. In 1990, Pollen and friend slash longtime filmmaking partner Rish George began shooting amateur horror movies on VHS to immortalize their hours of labor. But these weren't just your average dime store gore movies. Pollen and George took their filmmaking very seriously, even if some of their projects were never intended to reach audiences. From their very humble beginnings and onward, Pollen and co. were intently focused on making ambitious yet stylish movies of varying genres with whatever resources they had available. And by 1994, Pollen would settle on a company name that we'll soon find perfectly sums up his body of work. That name is Morbid Vision Films. The first movie to be produced under the Morbid Vision banner was 1994's Reap of Evil, which Pollen says was probably the most ambitious work he had ever produced. The movie was remarkable for its full-scale demon makeup and sets, however it saw diminishing returns in its limited distribution, and was absolutely trashed in reviews at the time because of its poor storytelling. But rather than leaving discouraged by the negative feedback, Brian Pollen took the initiative to improve his storytelling abilities and up the ante on his gore. By 1998, the Morbid Vision crew had acquired better equipment and were granted a greater chance at success after each consequent movie received wide-scale distribution, earning them more praise and, in some cases, infamy. After the success of his chaotic 2004 zombie flick, Bone Sickness, by 2008, Pollen would unleash perhaps his most infamous work yet, Fetus. It's hard to describe Fetus as anything more than truly depraved, and definitely deserving of the title of a Morbid Vision film. To this day, people are still perplexed by the movie's ability to shock, and it still sports some of the most what-the-fuck moments in shot-on-video horror. But even with this massive accomplishment in the bag, Pollen had yet to scratch just the most vile and disgusting of an itch. And that's where we are today, with his newest and perhaps sickest film yet, Septic. It all starts in a seemingly normal neighborhood where a seemingly normal citizen is enjoying some computer time, but we soon find that she's actually logged onto a dark web screening service, or a red room, where she donates large sums of money to a couple of scumbags torturing an unfortunate soul. However, this opening scene serves as nothing more than a precursor to the movie's bizarre main story. A couple that are trying to have another kid hatch an unorthodox plan to pay for a uterus transplant surgery, and they go to a guy named Thomas for help. Thomas works for the morally bankrupt Dr. Wu as a Red Room operator, and is responsible for distributing snuff videos and live streams to filthy rich benefactors. The couple decide that the best way to fund their surgery is to live stream the death and dissection of an organ donor. Despite the uncertainty over the legality and morality of their plan, the live stream is a huge success and the couple are able to get the transplant. Spoiler alert, here's where things start to get worse. As the plot unfolds, we get to see just how unlikable and scummy some of these characters truly are. We learn that Thomas is just a sick pervert who gets off on some of the more extreme videos he produces, but he really is little more than a puppet in the Red Room play perpetrated by Dr. Wu. Charlie, who goes by the pseudonym Dr. Wu, is one of the more interesting characters in Septic. He likes to portray himself as a stereotypical Asian to his stupidly rich clientele so that he conveys some sense of inferiority to them. However, Wu's ego will only further inflate with his devious plan to traffic Thomas to Hong Kong, perhaps for his most disgusting live stream yet. This never really gets built upon, but it's clear that Wu seems just as driven by the money than anyone else in the movie. The wife, who is not only seriously neglecting her young daughter, eventually has both her daughter and her husband killed and brutalized on camera to further capitalize. But the greedier she becomes, the more she rots away. 
to the point where her new uterus rejects itself from her body, and she thematically becomes one with the greedy, bloodthirsty fairy. By the time I had finished watching Septic, I was definitely perplexed by what I'd watched, but also a little confused. The best explanation I could give of this movie story and potential underlying meaning has been cobbled together by studious rewatches and context clues. Septic was filmed over a five-year period from 2016 to 2021, which proved to be a period of great anguish for Brian Pollan. He wanted to make a movie that he could concentrate every last ounce of his spite and his anger into, and the result is one of the most unnerving and nihilistic movies I've ever seen. The story of Septic seems a little bit aimless at points, and there are lots of scenes that are inserted for almost no reason other than to shock the audience. These range from copious amounts of extreme gore and snuff, some of which involves children, to a few unsimulated fetish sequences involving vomit and razors. Beyond the very few sympathetic victims, every character in this movie is an irredeemably rotten human being, and they perfectly embody Pollen's cynical views on humanity. The aimlessness of the story is parallel to Pollen's unbridled disgust, and while the story is shallow compared to other works in the Morbid Vision repertoire, as it stands, Septic is still a solid gore movie. The actors do a half-decent job with their roles, and while the lighting and the camera work sometimes just don't set the right mood, Pollen really immerses the viewer with his sound design, editing, and pacing. Especially during the first half, Septic just has this really tense, uncomfortable vibe that just left me uneasy, and I never expected what could happen next. Definitely the highlight of the movie, though, is the next-level brutality. These are definitely some of the most unapologetically barbaric kills in the Morbid Vision catalog. And while they may not have the what-the-fuck factor of their other works, they're definitely sick enough to give gorehounds wet dreams. Trust me, the movie is actually way more graphic than some of the footage I'm showing here, and the hard work and dedication Pollen and crew dumped into Septic is on full display. If you're a fan of extreme horror, then definitely seek out Septic, because it's arguably one of the most extreme underground movies in recent memory. After all, you'd be hard-pressed to find a movie more worthy of the label Hypergore.